ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار one of the scholars of the past he said that one day we were on an expedition and with us was a soldier who was a young man and he had memorized the whole of the quran and there was no one from amongst this group who we thought was better than this young man he had memorized the quran he would fast during the day and he would pray during the nights they said there was no one from amongst us who we thought was better than this individual there was no one who understood fiqh and the fiqh of the religion more than him and there was no one who understood the laws of inheritance better than him in this group of ours they said that we were on this expedition and while we were on this expedition we came across this fort and this young man who we loved so much it was like as if he was our own son this young man he went close to the fort to relieve himself and when he looked up he saw a woman a woman from the romans a christian woman and when he saw her he was amazed by her and so he started to talk to this woman and he said to her how can i get to you i want to be with you and she said you won't be able to enter the fort and be with me unless you become a christian and some of the people who were in this expedition they said we had no idea this was taking place except after it was done and after he went into the fort this man he went into the fort by accepting christianity and he ended up with that woman and the people who were in this expedition this group they said that when this happened they were shocked they couldn't believe what had happened it was like as if they lost their own son and they carried on on this expedition but you know they they their minds weren't all there you know they were shocked over this incident they couldn't get over it one of their own had just left islam for a woman on the way back from the expedition they happened to pass by the same fort and when they looked up they saw the same man looking down on them and they called out to him they said ya fulan aw so and so what happened to your islam what happened to your salah what happened to your quran what happened to your fasts what happened to your knowledge what happened to you and he looked down on them and he said i have forgotten all of it i don't remember any of it none of my quran none of my knowledge but i only remember one portion of the quran just one of one or two ayahs and they said what are those ayat that you remember and he said rubama yawaddu alladhina kafaru law kanu muslimin he said that the non muslims those who disbelieve they wish that they were with the muslims they wish that they were part of the muslim ummah hum ya'kulu wa yatamattau wa yulhihim al-amal fa sawfa ya'lamun leave them be let them enjoy themselves let them eat and let them drink until 
until they are, they're held to account for what they did. And then they'll come to realize the sins that they committed. From the lessons we can learn from this story, brothers and sisters, and from this incident, is the importance of lowering the gaze. We live in a society where sexuality is prominent. Wherever we look, we're bombarded with billboards and magazines and websites where shamelessness is you know, widespread. It's not even shameless and it's not even something which is, you know, people feel ashamed about anymore. It's something common, it's something normal. And we're surrounded by this. This society that we live in should be an incentive for us to strive with regards to this aspect of our faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about the importance of lowering the gaze. And he says, tell the believing men. Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and to protect their private parts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same thing with regards to the believing women. To lower their gaze. Lowering the gaze, brothers and sisters, is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded in the Quran. For a person to refrain from looking at those people who aren't a mahram to him, at women who aren't related to him. And in this day and age, in this society that we live in, and especially in this season, in the summer months, it's something which we have to be careful of even more. A person needs to refrain from looking at things which will increase his desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has ordered this in the Qur'an. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was was once asked by a companion about the sudden gaze. When a person just looks at something suddenly and then he averts his gaze straight away. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was was asked about this and he commanded the companions and he commanded them to avert their gaze after they make the initial gaze. If a person looks at something which is haram to him, let him turn his gaze away straight away and he won't be held to account for that first gaze on the condition that he looks away straight away. We look at the dangers of of not lowering the gaze and the benefits of lowering the gaze as Muslims, as believers. One of the benefits of lowering the gaze, brothers and sisters, is that you're obeying the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person who doesn't lower his gaze, and who doesn't try his utmost to lower his gaze, he's disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's disobeying the commandments of Allah azza wa jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when a person doesn't obey Allah Azza wa Jal and doesn't obey his messenger alayhi salatu was salam, then his deeds won't be of any value. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Obey Allah and obey his messenger. وَلَا تُبْطِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ And don't make your deeds worthless. When a person disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he runs the risk of making his deeds end up worthless, of no benefit to him whatsoever. Another harm of not lowering the gaze, brothers and sisters, is that it can lead one to adultery. It can lead one to having illegal relationships with people of the opposite gender. The Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he would say that the eyes commit zina, the eyes commit adultery. How can the eyes commit adultery? Because of what the eyes look at. Because of what the eyes look at. The Messenger of Allah, he would talk about the eyesight. And he would say that the eyesight, Saham min sihami iblis. He would say it's an arrow from the poisonous arrows of iblis. 
And he said, whoever refrains and stops himself from looking at something that isn't halal for him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace that with a sweetness in his heart that he'll have until the day of judgment. When a person obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person lowers his gaze, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put that halawatul iman in his heart, that sweetness of iman inside his heart. From the dangers of not lowering the gaze, brothers and sisters, is that he starts to belittle the sin that he's committing. And he thinks it's not a big deal. He thinks there's nothing wrong with this sin. One of the companions, he said that the believer, when he commits a sin, it's like a huge mountain about to crumble on top of him. That's how he sees the sin. Even if he commits a small sin, in his eyes, it's the biggest thing that he can do. It's a serious thing. And he said the hypocrite or the sinner, when he commits a sin, it's like a, a fly in front of him that he just swats away. It's not a big deal. It's something minor. It's not having an effect on him or on his heart. They did this experiment where they boiled water. This experiment in which they boiled water and they took a frog. They took this frog and they put the frog in the boiling water. And the frog jumped out straight away because the water was hot. Then they put the frog in lukewarm water, water which wasn't boiling hot. And they slowly increased the temperature of the water until the water became boiling and the frog never leapt out. The frog stayed in the water and the frog died. When a person sees something haram blatantly in front of his eyes and it's something big and it's a major sin and it's a major haram, he averts his gaze and he stays away from it. But when he doesn't stop himself from committing small sins, then those small sins are going to mount up. They're going to mount up and on the day of judgment they'll be like mountains and they'll be against him when he's in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person when he commits small sins, he doesn't realize the impact it's having on his heart because they're small, they're tiny. But this is one of the traps of the shaitan where he makes you think it's not a big deal. And before you know it, your heart has become black with sins. And it's having an effect on you even though you don't realize. Another danger, brothers and sisters, of not lowering the gaze is that it opens the door to the shaitan and the shaitan starts to let you or encourages you to do other sins which you never used to commit. So one day a sin is something which you never used to do. A particular sin which you knew it was haram. And it was something which you would never have even imagined to do. But because you committed other sins, it led to more sins. And those sins led to other sins. And before you know it, you're committing sins which you, never have, which you would never have even imagined that you would have committed in your life. A person when he commits a sin... It can lead to other sins. And most of the time it does lead to other sins. So a person needs to stop himself from committing that first sin so that it doesn't lead him to commit other sins. When a person belittles the sins that he's doing, it also stops him from striving to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, He talks about the Day of Judgment. And He talks about how the individual will see his sins on the Day of Judgment. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Whomsoever will do an atom's weight of good in this world. Something tiny, something small. The scholars say, an atom's weight means the tiniest thing. For example, when the sun shines through the window and you see specks of dust in the air, 
Something as small as that. If a person does an atom's weight of good, something as tiny as that, something which doesn't even have any weight in our eyes. If a person does a deed which he may think is something tiny, something maybe even insignificant, on the day of judgment he'll see the good deeds that he did on his scale of good deeds. And when a person commits sins, he'll see those sins even if they were small. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرٍّ يَرَى And whoever committed atoms weight of evil, they will see them on the day of judgment. A person will see everything he did on the day of judgment. He'll be able to see all the things that he did, all the things that he said. So a person needs to refrain. A person needs to be careful when it comes to committing sins, even if he thinks that they're minor, even if he thinks that they're sins which aren't a big deal. Another problem, when a person doesn't lower his gaze and looks at things which he shouldn't be looking at, looking at things which are haram for him to look at, is that it causes a strain on his marital relationship. It causes problems and conflicts between him and his spouse. The spouse sees his or her spouse looking at something which is haram. How do you think it makes that person feel? It makes that person feel worthless. It makes that person feel as if he or she isn't worth anything. And when a person looks at things which are haram and he's not married then when he looks at those things, he expects things to be that way when he gets married. And then when he gets married and things aren't the way he expected, then it causes strains on the relationship because he had other ideas. He had other perceptions, other things, other thoughts of how marriage was going to be, how married life was going to be how his relationship with his spouse or how her relationship with her spouse was going to be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protects us from the fitna and the evil of society. I say this and I ask for Allah to give you the peace of Allah. I say Allah to give you the peace of Allah and the peace of Allah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We were talking about the importance of lowering the gaze and how Allah سبحانه وتعالى has ordered us in the Quran to lower our gaze. This is an order from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And so because it's an order from Allah سبحانه وتعالى, anybody who looks at something, anybody who looks at something which isn't halal for him. then he is going to be committing a sin. And a person needs to do whatever is possible. He needs to do whatever he physically can do to try to avoid looking at those things which are haram for him. Whatever he can do to lower his gaze. And we talked about the harms that this can cause with regards to his Islam and with regards to his Iman. And it can lead to other types of sins. And I want to talk about ways in which a person can lower his gaze or ways in which it will make a person easier to lower his gaze. What steps can a person go to? What steps can a person take so that he can uh, lower his gaze in an easier way? It'll be easy for him in the society that we live in. It's difficult for a person to always lower his gaze. It's difficult not to look at things which are haram for him. So what things can a person do so that it's made easier for him to do this thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked of him and ordered him to do? The first thing that a person can do, brothers and sisters, is to realize and know in his heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching wherever and whatever you're doing. Wherever you may be, whatever you're doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness. And he sees everything that you're doing. No matter where you are and no matter who is with you, even if you're on your own. In a house, 
where there's nobody else except you. And you're on your laptop or you're on your mobile phones. And nobody else is there. Nobody else can see you. You should know in the bottom of your heart that whatever you do is never going to escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see everything. And if a person has this in his heart, and he's aware, and he's conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him wherever he is, whatever he's doing, in whatever state he may be in, then this will help him to lower his gaze and not look at things which are haram for him. Another thing that a person can do to help him lower his gaze, brothers and sisters, is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he helps you lower your gaze. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an. Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni. When my slave asks you about me, fa'inni qarib. Then verily I am close. I respond to the one who supplicates to me so long as he continues to make dua. So long as he makes dua to me and supplicates to me. So a person should supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal. One of the greatest weapons of the believer is dua, is supplication. You can make supplication anytime, any place, anywhere, whatever state you may be in. If you feel like you're going to fall into haram, supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that very moment. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from evil, to protect you from harm. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu he said that dua is worship. Supplication is worship. Because you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as opposed to asking the creation of Allah azza wa jal. Another way in which a person can help himself lower his gaze is by striving and making the effort and doing whatever a person can to lower his gaze and then being patient on that. It's not going to be easy. No one said it was going to be easy. But a person tries as much as he can. You know, he has this striving of the soul, this jihad on nafs. He tries as hard as he can. He struggles with his soul. He makes this effort for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person makes the effort for Allah azza wa jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that path easier for him. He just has to make the effort. You know, when a person does an exam, the one who's marking the exam doesn't look at how hard the person tried, how much effort the person made, how many nights he revised for. He looks at the overall result. He looks at the overall mark. If a person failed, he failed. Doesn't matter how, how hard he tried. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He looks at how hard we try. He looks at our effort. He looks at how hard we're going to try and how much effort we go to to please Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا He said, those who strive in our way, those who strive for me, I'm going to make their path easier for them. I will guide them to my path. I'll make it easier for them. All a person has to do is to make the effort. All he has to do is to try. The Messenger of Allah, والسلام, he said, whoever looks to be chaste, whoever looks to not get involved in adultery or fornication, or, the, or, or zina, the zina of the eyes or the zina of the private parts, Whoever refrains himself from this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him chaste. And whoever seeks to be independent with regards to his means and his risk and his income, doesn't rely on other people, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him independent of means. And whoever strives to be patient, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him from the patient. A person just has to make that effort. He has to strive for these things. And when a person strives for these things, when he does whatever he's able to do, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the path easier for him. Another way in which a person can make it easier for himself to lower his gaze is by avoiding 
using your mobile phones and other social you know, media devices for haram purposes. When a person wastes his time on WhatsApp and on Facebook and on other things, he's going to end up watching things or seeing things or looking at things which are haram because he's got time to spare. And so he goes on his phone and he just fl- starts flicking through things and he sees things which are haram. And he may go into something. He may click on something. He may go onto a page which he shouldn't be going on. So whenever a person uses these devices, he uses them with the intention that he's going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through them. By worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through remembrance of, the, through remembrance of him, <coughs> through doing daily adhkar, or by reading Quran, using his mobile phone, or by listening to lectures. So when he uses these devices, he, he's using them for good. He's not using them to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he has things on his phone which are reminding him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, apps such as the Quran or daily adhkar or talks and so on and so forth, then it helps him refrain from doing haram things with those devices, with his mobile phone, with his tablet, with his laptops. So a person needs to make sure that whenever he has these devices in his hand, that he's using them for good. Or he's doing something beneficial with them. He's doing something productive with them. And he's not wasting his time with them. Another way in which a person can make it easier for himself to lower his gaze is by knowing and understanding that this very earth that we're on right now, on the day of judgment, it's going to be a witness against us. It's going to speak out. It's going to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about everything that took place on it and everything that we did on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا On that day, on the day of judgment, it will report back to its Lord about what took place on it, about its news. Everything that took place on the earth the earth will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَالَهَا Because your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your Lord has commanded the earth to speak, which means the earth wants to speak. It wants to speak out. It wants to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's happening on it, the burdens on the earth. He wants to tell, the earth, he wants to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's taking place on it but it's waiting for permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that it can speak. This very earth which we are living on. Another way in which a person can help himself lower his gaze is by marriage, is by getting married. The messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, whoever can afford it, then let him get married. Because it's more effective in lowering the gaze and in guarding one's chastity. And another way of Helping yourself lower the gaze if you're not able to get married is to fast. Because when a person fasts, it weakens the desires. It makes a person weaker. He doesn't have the energy to look at those things or to think of those things. And with Ramadan around the corner, it's the best time, the most appropriate time to fast. To train our bodies once again to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan. And finally, brothers and sisters, increasing in worship generally, and specifically with regards to the salah, with regards to the prayer, the obligatory prayers, perfecting the obligatory prayers, and also increasing in optional prayers. Because when a person prays to Allah, when he performs salah, it stops him from committing sins and from committing evil deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Verily, the prayer prevents one from sins and from evil deeds. So when a person prays, it stops him. It's like a barrier between him and sins which accumulate against him, and there'll be a testament against him on the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to lower our gaze and we are able to go about using these means and methods 
to help us lower our gaze. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma aghfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat inna Allaha ya'murukum bil 'adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghyi ya'izukum la'allakum tadhakkarun fadhkuruhu ala ni'ami yazidkum wa la dhikrullahi a'la wa awla wa akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasma'un aqimus salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Souls, full fakum, straighten your rows, straightening the roses from the perfection of the prayer. So make sure your rows are straight. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين سبح اسم ربك الاعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر
سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just a few announcements. Task Force GLM has partnered, partnered with various bread factories in Idlib, Syria, with the aim to bake enough bread to provide up to 12 million Syrian refugees with bread free of charge, inshallah. We ask all our brothers and sisters to donate generously towards this noble project. Please remember, for every person that receives bread from the factory, you will inshallah be rewarded immensely. And as announced in previous weeks, every Friday after Jum'ah, we will be holding a snack stall outside both brothers and sisters' entrances. All proceeds will go towards the bread project. Please visit the stalls on your way out and make a purchase. Sisters at Green Lane Masjid, in association with Task Force GLM and Human Appeal, are holding a sisters' charity dinner, raising money to feed the Syrian people on Saturday 6th of June from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. There will be performances, stalls, auctions, and a three-course meal, and much more. Tickets are £15, and from the stall outside, or alternatively from the reception during office hours. Sisters are also taking donations of brand new or once-worn wedding clothes for the event. Tonight's Urdu lecture will take place after Salat al-Maghrib, inshallah. Also, Saturday, the Saturday lecture after al-Maghrib is entitled The Battle of the Trench, and will be delivered by Abu Abdullah Yunus, inshallah. Our food bank service urgently requires food donations. We are currently running low on cooking oil, milk, rice, drinks, and ladies' and men toiletries. Please leave your donations during office hours at the message reception through door C. If you are struggling to find work, need help with completing your CV, or need interview skills, we are now offering a service for you. GLMCC Job Club is running every Monday, with morning sessions for sisters and afternoon sessions for brothers. For more information, please come to the reception through door C, inshallah. The volunteers at Green Lane Masjid are the backbone of this masjid. Volunteers run everything that we deliver here in the masjid, including our new services. We are now recruiting for more volunteers to help us expand even further for the benefit of the entire community. If you would like to join the team, then please come to the reception uh, through door C. Greenland Masjid will be holding a tarbiyah camp here in the masjid from Saturday the 30th to Sunday the 31st of May, inshallah. This will be an opportunity for you to benefit from excellent instructors, interesting workshops, as well as fun-filled recreational activities. The camp is for brothers only and is free of charge. Registration is required and can be done through our website or in the reception, inshallah. 
Young Ummah, the GLM Youth Service, is always looking for ways to improve the standard of our youth development. Alhamdulillah, we are now looking to establish a professionally run Islamic scouts group for various ages. If you are interested in a place in the group for your child, then register your interest by attending the scouts meeting taking place here in the masjid tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. inshallah. The entrance will be through door F. Lastly, we apologize for the inconvenience caused by the building work in the masjid. We are trying our best to improve the site for your comfort, access, and your worship. Please have patience with us. Once again, please donate generously on your way out. We jazakumullahu khair.